my first attempt at doing an open website in an academic context has been for my ESRM 492 service learning in New Orleans class. And this is a class wherein um, we have some component here on campus, but the, the bulk of the time spent is actually in New Orleans is, is outside of California. And this was um, uh, my first attempt at a tool that would be both serving to the, the students in the class, but also help um, try to bring the experience to uh, folks outside of the class, folks outside of the academic environment, and a first stab at being a collaboratory space. So let's take a look at what we did. Here's our site. The most important page uh, for us is the home page, is our blog where we're, we're entering stuff. And, and mo most folks are interacting with the site here. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff real quickly. You could see, for example, um, a course overview here, which is a really truncated version of a syllabus. Um, all kinds of background or information that people are interested. Two things I want to highlight, though, uh, not that we're, I mean, you can get to them from this menu. But the more uh, upfront issues, in addition to just the blog, which again, if you go to the home page, the blog is all below here. But um, pictures and videos, which uh, grab feeds from our Flickr account, which we're posting to throughout the trip. Um, this will just play a slideshow. This is uh, non-iOS friendly. This is. Um, issues with Steve Jobs and Adobe and all that kind of stuff. So this will work great on, on some platforms, but not mobile Apple devices. This version, same idea, just uh, grabbing it in a way that uh, will be rendered for all devices. So both are, both are uh, two options. These are these little plugins that I, I added into my page. And then we have a couple videos here. Um, we have lots of videos that are on the actual, our actual YouTube account and are linked to through our blog postings. But these were uh, some particular things that I wanted our, our collaborating university partners to make sure they saw and were updated. So, so all this and that. One, one quick lesson here, don't put a reply comment option on every single page, only on blogs and, and maybe one or two pages. So, so this pictures and videos area worked fairly well. Here's an example of something that, that worked very poorly. I was attempting to use uh, geotagging to allow folks to follow along with our trip, but um, I, I, this is the first time it did this, tried very di various different options and, and did almost all of them incredibly poorly. Uh, the idea here was supposed to be you could follow us moving around the city and seeing all the places we went to, but obviously by the, the way we, we engage this tool, it, it, uh, the scale doesn't really work. So um, I definitely want to keep doing this in the future. I have ideas how to do this better, but, but a, a great idea, poorly executed my first time. Just want to talk briefly about the uh, things that I think did work and didn't work and some lessons learned. Firstly, uh, some observances. I like dark templates. It's very easy. Firstly, it's very easy to get lost in the template world, the, the, the spiral, spiral black hole of 70,000 possible different web templates you can choose from. Um, in general, you should choose a responsive one. Almost everybody is interacting with this website via a small screen, a mobile device. So responsive uh, template is key. Secondly, generally for you know viewing on a, on a large computer screen or in a nice environment, dark background is much better, much easier to view. Uh, text pops, it's easier to read. Pictures pop, they're, 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 they're easier to view. The problem is we were doing this out in the field, and when you did that, the, the darkness here, the, the blackness, the gray, dark grayness, um, was sometimes difficult to see. And, and, and the, the, say, for example, black to gray contrast was hard to see in the strong sunlight. So dark templates can look great, but they can be difficult in the field. As far as uh, lessons learned, here is an example of one of our posts. Um, it mixes photos, big photos, small photos, with some um, uh, video. For our video, all of our video to save space on the server, all our videos are posted to YouTube, and then we, we, we link to the video. Uh, we link to YouTube through our web page. So um, it's easier on our server space, but it is a couple, a little bit of extra steps, a little bit of extra complication that can be a bit of a pain in the butt when you're trying to do it from a mobile app. We have a mix of, of quick posts and reflective posts. So here's an example of a reflective post Stephanie did after she got back. Um, other students' reflective posts. And then we uh, also have posts such as uh, this, which were a lot of just quick, um, here's a picture, 
and or here's a quick statement, here's an observation. Um, one lesson that I learned is to require both of these, to require at least one quick post in the daytime and one more reflective one. If they want to post more than that, that's great, but hopefully at least one of those. When, when I didn't give any guidance, initially everybody was only just simply posting uh, pictures. And while you know potentially useful, that wasn't getting at some of the learning outcomes I was hoping to get out with this. Please install some of the spam blockers, some of the email pestering blockers, because they just are um, hugely problematic. They, uh, if you don't install that, you're going to get um, inundated with weird comments and people making posts and stuff of that nature uh, on your blog entries. Things we can do better, I mentioned the geospatial tag. Another one is the mobile app. This is a fairly common problem. So you see here on this, this posting on March 21st, this was a, a, an issue one of our students, I guess in this case Tevin, posted from his mobile device. We found that either because the network was plugged up or because uh, we were just on the edge of connectivity, something like that, we, we, we partially uploaded an image, or we got the address save an image loaded up, but the actual image didn't render. And so we have a lot of these broken multimedia links uh, frequently. Didn't seem to happen when we were posting from computers, when we had the opportunity to do that back in our hotel rooms or what have you, but really um, uh, fairly common from our mobile device. So there were things that did not work very well with our mobile device. Another common thing that we had, the, probably the biggest problem I would say, was just the problem with spelling and grammar and, and, and just poor spelling, poor grammar. A lot of that stems from simply uh, these guys being exhausted, only getting five hours of sleep a night and rushing, rushing, rushing. But primarily I think it derives from the mobile device that they were using to enter their stuff. Putting a word or two is easy. Writing full sentences and multiple sentences is a problem when you're squinting at your small screen, thumbs getting in the way. And so wherever we could, I encourage students to go back later that day or, or ideally that day to go back in and look at their postings and hopefully uh, clean up some of their grammatical uh, and spelling errors. In general, though, the web app was, was a good thing. Uh, worked uh, uh, quite well in terms of ease and, and, and way to, ways to update ideas as soon as they pop in your head. That was great. Another uh, thing that I really um, didn't appreciate was the importance of... of uh, so one, one, I was mostly focused on this as a tool for uh, reflection, student engagement, etc. But um, it was really, really uh, powerful in terms of um, getting people after our trip to think about stuff. So they use this as a travel log, and it really helped them in their post-trip scholarship, their post-trip reflections, think about what did we do? Um, what do we do on this day? And oh, I forgot about that. And so that was really important. The second thing that turned out to be really important was the fact that many of our students are first-generation college goers and, and haven't maybe traveled particularly extensively. And as a consequence, uh, it's fairly often on these types of experiences for my students, I wouldn't say pestered or bugged, but I'll just say are uh, frequently um, uh, uh, loved ones and parents and stuff are frequently interested in getting into contact with our students. And so sometimes that comes in the form of emails. Sometimes that comes in the phone of, form of phone calls. And they want to know, is everything okay? You know, how's it going? And what we found is uh, a lot of people followed our blog, um, community members, friends, family members. And, and it turns out qualitatively, hard to get quantitative data here, but qualitatively it sure as heck seemed like they really felt like they were going along with the trip with us. And they didn't feel the need to go in and constantly be checking on their, their loved ones. And so it was a way of allowing other people to an extent to share in what we're doing and to learn uh, from what we're doing, even if they couldn't be with us in Louisiana uh, on the actual trip. So overall, a great first try. A lot of things I want to do better in terms of instructions for students, in terms of grammar, in terms of geospatial logging of our entries, all that kind of stuff. But as a first pass, I think this worked really well. So um, please do check it out and, uh, and let me know if you guys have any suggestions for the future. But this is one example of trying to use open web presence tools, open blogs, here at, in the ESRM program at California State University Channel Islands. Thanks, you guys.